please welcome back to the stage, Crystal Clear! Get, get comfortable. Welcome to the show. Get comfortable. Not living room comfortable. They should be taking your underwear off. I'm not wearing any. <laughs> we you? saw when you opened your legs when you stood up. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've got a Every week here on the show we have a special guest and it's just the first time we've doubled up and, and just gone tight and doubled up with the drag queen performer and also lazy. our special guest. But it's a really, really beautiful thing. We have a series of questions to ask you, uh, Crystal. So I'm thrilled that you're here. Did you know, Crystal, that it's Saturday, Shift Bar with DJs Matt Effect and Adam Love, your hostess is Felicity Frappuccino. I did know that. That's and I'm alternating weeks, it's menage a trois. There you go. Did you also know Lip Sync Battle is now happening from 10pm? Thursday nights, hosted by the wonderful Maxi Shield. But she's away this week. This week, week so by Carmen Gatter. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 is this what we got her on stage to talk about? Prizes for best lip. I'm just sliding in an ad before we start. Okay. Prizes for best lip. I was going to say, this is like interview of the year. And bring your favourite um, song for DJ Mickey and they'll play it as fun. Well. And like, straight. And you don't have to be a drag queen, you can be a normal boy or yeah. a normal girl, or an abnormal boy or an abnormal girl. Or like, take insulin, a pen. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, that. Or a, or a nori. Okay, Chris. Oh, oh. I'm not going to comment on that one. Okay, Crystal Clear, welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you. Hi. I've known you for a number of years now, actually. How long do you think you've been doing dragging for? I know that I've been doing it since doing dragging? What, is she like a sack of potatoes? <laughs> she's been doing drag change. She's been doing drag. Dragging right. is something you do when you've got something heavy and you can't be bothered lifting it. So, <laughs> that's what I do. Dragging. <laughs> that's what I do. No, that's what your friends do at the end of a Sunday night. I have to drive everywhere. I've been doing it since the 30th of September 2008. Amazing. How come you can remember that date it's so well? It's my birthday. Yay! It's coming up to my 8, yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. My seven year, my seven year old birthday. My seven well, birthday. Well, Amazing. Again. Yes. Happy yes. But happy birthday for them. Thank you. Mm. So good. One of my biggest memories for you, and this is before we knew each other, so I don't know if it was a big moment for you or not, or how the whole history was, yeah. but you won the big drag competition up here at Shift. I, um, <laughs> I did. Yeah. It was Taurus Drag like Race. Taurus Drag Race. 2000 and... Well, yeah. I was skinny. I was... So uh, it was. I was it was you so were skinny. No, I was... <laughs> And um, it was an amazing moment because I've seen you done drag um, on the scene for a number of so years. Year but it seemed that, to me that that was a big moment. The year for you. before that, I was fifth runner up in the first Torres Drag Race, and the year before that, I was the first runner up, lost to Conchita Grande wow. for Tora Hyman's Drag Survivor. Yeah. Right. Or as I like to call it, the stuffed turkey drag survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about her. So. Was that a big moment for you? Yeah, the, was it was that big, that change moment. things it in was terms huge, of gigs and all that sort of stuff? Yep, it was a huge moment, like a really, really big moment. Um, after I won, well, during the competition, someone was sick um, at Tranny Bingo, and Tora called me and said, "Can you be the girl for Tranny, uh, the um, assistant for Tranny Bingo?" And that's when I started Tranny Bingo, and I was picked up. And Tora really, really was the one to give me my first proper job in drag. That's amazing. And now the highlight of your career, you're a co-host on Hey Hey It's Wednesday. <laughs> Isn't your, your career going from height to height? Height to height. It is. <laughs> It is. And so now, for the last couple of years, you've been working a lot, hey, and doing the whole thing, and traveling, and performing, and well, what's the highlight for you over the last couple of years? Um, oh, I did a really, really fun job. I think it was last year, we did Share the Love, with Share, spelled Share, C-H-E-R, where we did a huge flash mob on the army ship in the middle of yes. Darling Harbour. A whole bunch Maritime of... Maritime Museum. We, we were all dressed as Share, and we did... Um, turn back time, and that was a really, really big. Fun. And Cher saw it, and Cher retweeted it. It's really cool. She saw it, and it was fun. Um, I've had many highlights. Um, I got into drag when I was studying makeup um, after I left school, and then from there I got a lot of 
work, uh, work opportunities um, through makeup, and then I just fell into it. So I met I met cool. the drag queen. I got to do yeah. uh, so the 2009. 2009 Mardi Gras after party I did Adam Lambert's makeup and cool. uh, so did Kelly Rowland's week. It took me four hours. It was a waste of time. But it was such such an amazing experience, and that was when I really sort of first met people like Minnie Cooper and yeah. Charisma. Um, and you realised yeah. that that was your calling as well. Well, no, no, no. I, my calling was um, I went out when I was 17, and I saw Tora on stage um, at. Ark. And I said, how do I become a drag queen? How do I do this? Because I didn't know it was a real job. Um, and she goes, just come here next week. So, come here next week with um, uh, with a song on a CD and do drag for dollars yeah. and um, compete. And I competed every single week for f four odd years. Yeah, yeah, I think three I saw you there four odd years. many times. Won, cool. won quite a few times and then I did the competitions and I won. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Tora, Tora's been very influential. That's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah. What kind of boy were you in high school? Like, were you an extrovert, or were you quiet, or was it... No, I was loud, I was a loud kid. Yeah. I was, I was an angry teenager, I was yeah. aggressive. Were you obviously gay, or...? Yeah, I was out. Yeah. That wasn't an issue, but I went, I went to Castle Hill High School, where I was, was predominantly surrounded by heterosexual Lebanese boys, and I'm a gay Jewish black boy, so I, yeah. <laughs> Was that fun. sounds fun. That's when I really mastered makeup, like getting, <laughs> getting rid of the bruise. <laughs> and that's where I learned how to smoke and straighten my hair. And it's where. You blow his behind the shed. No, the boys are dirty in my ear. The dick smells like cheese. <laughs> Teenage boys are stinky. Well, so I'm sure it's I think that's where my dick rooted. I have a thing for older guys, not mm. really like old guys, but like guys that really like, know how to well, shower and... Well, that's not you, but um... <laughs> 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 the boyfriend laughs the loudest. <laughs> but yeah, I like older guys and know how to take care of themselves. I don't like... Yeah, stupid. independent people. Yeah. Um, Alright, well let's talk about... Who's you, Al? The most recent... The, you know, sort of most recent thing, which is on yeah, Facebook. Um, I'm going to say a couple of months ago now. It's a couple of months ago. Three or, months. Three months ago yeah. you announced. It was on next, not this Tuesday, but Tuesday after. I yeah. I've got to get my medication prescripted. <laughs> um, three months <laughs> in two weeks. So it's two and a half months yeah. ago I came out and I told... You wrote a beautiful post on Facebook I saying it's been nine months. months. It's been nine months since I was diagnosed with HIV. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just started medicating, and it was very, it was a sort of a mem momentous occasion. Yeah. I did a right before right. I was right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I'd written that status right before I had to go on for Tranny Bingo, and I was with Varushka Darling, and she's very thick about me being on yeah. during work. So she was like, can't touch your phone for two hours. <laughs> two hours. And in that two hours, I got something like, 150 inbox messages, yeah. 500 likes, and a billion, a billion, a billion comments. Yeah. That's all that you get for a ridiculous, ring, ridiculous amount. Ridic ridiculous amount. I mean, of support. But when, before you announced, and obviously you've gone through all this stuff over the, the previous nine months before that, um, discovering your status and going through it. Did you bounce off other people privately about whether you should announce, or you just knew that you wanted to deal with it publicly? No, so the whole year was just a fucking vile year. I'd just broken up with Jeremy, yeah. um, and sort of getting over the pain of that was a little bit difficult because... Well, like, we didn't love each other anymore in that way, but we loved each other so much as friends, and we yeah. knew that we didn't want to be apart from each other, but we mm. just weren't in love, and we wanted to see other people, and it was, it was like that. So he remained such a constant part of my life, and of course, Dramas of me being jealous of things and him being jealous of things are obvious dramas which have eased up completely yeah. and um, become friends with the people that he's dating and he's gotten to know the people that I've slightly dabbled in. I'm not a dater. I don't like dating. It's not for me. Um, but that was... So three months after we broke up, I was diagnosed, which was really hard. That was a hard thing. It was a really, really difficult thing. And, like, and... Making this status, writing this status, um, helped me sort of just dealing with dealing. Because I went on a date. I went on a date with a really, really lovely guy, and he was 19, but he was quite grown up and yeah. really took care of himself. He was over from England, um, and 
I was fine all through the day, and then when it came to tell him, because I don't like, I don't know what to, because there's a part of me is like, oh, I'd really like to see this guy, but also I don't want to expose him to this sort of thing that could potentially ruin his life, because people take things completely different ways, and yeah. I've been very fine with it. Yeah. I've got it now. It, it's always it. the challenge. <laughs> the, I've got it now, I can't get rid of it, so might as well move forward. The challenge of deciding like when, when they don't know the point in time which to tell them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's always easier when you know them a little bit less. Yeah. But I still cried. Mm. I cried. On, and this was like, this is like two weeks, two or three weeks before I posted the status. And I think that was the last time I cried about it. I had a meltdown with Jeremy once when we were out. I yeah. was out in drag and we were at a friend's Oscars party and this girl was checking him, because he's bisexual, this girl was checking him out and it was all nice and thing. And then there was a guy that was sort of talk, like, talk, I was in drag, he was like, mm. how are you? And sort of expressing interest and was flirting a little bit. And I just lost it. I started crying. I was just like, you know, all the fine, you know, fucking out you can go over there tonight and fuck her, I'm going to tell him. And then he's going to be like, I'm crazy at HAB and blah, blah, blah. And I was, so over dramatic about it, but mm. um, Cam, Cam, Campbell Clarkson has got me uh, joined me into a group called the Institute of Many. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Which is a great group. Nick it Hollis, is. Uh, Nicholas uh, started it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so fabulous. But mm. um, and I know it's a little bit nasty to say, but seeing people, seeing people that have been positive for about two or three or four years that are still dealing with this. Mm. Like, yeah. get over it, move forward, empower yourself. And I know, like... You're like, also in the before, early stages like, of like, like, you, If you're a year or 12 or 14 months in, you, you, might, you might go through phases, maybe. Yeah, as well. you might go through so, phases. And you, like, you're gonna get, I'm gonna get my heart broken so many times by people. Mm. And obviously medication is just, oh my God, I've been, this medicine is just, it really fucked me up at the beginning. It made me really moody and I threw, yeah, the medicine, the, I think the medication has been the most difficult part of it. Mm. Um, yeah. If I could give you a hug right now, I would. You could pop a hug. Aww. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. You don't be like a freaking <laughs> dog for it. So I think, it's because you're hairy. <laughs> <laughs> you have six nipples. <laughs> I think um, you being so decided to be so public about it, mm -hmm. it you know is a what? beautiful thing to do like, I, for other people as well. Because you got a lot of fans. I think you're a big, public with a big queen. It's, it's and it's not. There's a few reasons why I became public about it. I mm. went to someone for advice about it, mm. and they said, "Don't tell anyone. Don't tell them. Just don't tell them." Mm. And I was like, "You're." A, 60 year old man and you are still so ashamed of this. Yeah, like, it's sort of like I coming could, out could, of the closet could, yeah, a I, second time, I, isn't I, it? I, I didn't have to do that, mum, mum already knew and she just said, yeah. okay, I said, yep, she goes, okay, good night. Um, <laughs> but it was, that was so upsetting for me to mm. see how affected this person was by it. And I mm. said, well, I'm not going to let it affect me like that. I'm going to let it empower me and become yeah. a voice for the voiceless. And then, I went to, the day I was di the day after I was diagnosed, I had work, and I went to someone for advice, and they said, go here, talk to this person, talk to that person, talk to this person, go to this doctor, take these drugs. Yeah. And I said, thank you so much for the advice, it's really helpful. Little did I know that they went to another person, oh, okay. um, and that person went and proceeded to tell all of my drag colleagues and stuff before I got a chance to oh, tell them tell myself. people. And yeah. I don't like I don't mind after I posted that status, I yeah. don't mind walking down the street and someone going, Oh, he's hot but someone whispering to them, Oh, he's got HIV. Yeah. I don't care now because I've yeah. posted the status, it's public knowledge, everyone knows about it, everyone can know about it, you can tell whoever you like about it. Mm. Except my grandma, if you know my grandma, don't tell her yet, she's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> like, keep her, keep her. I'm already a faggot, I'm covered in tattoos, so she's, she's not happy about it. Um, Do you think the um, can you coming out uh, and announcing to the public, it helps with the stigma in the community and the wider community? It did. I did a smart question. Um, yeah. I think I think it does because of course I, it does. With, with, with the inboxes and stuff, mm. a lot of 
young kids, young kids um, because you become friends with these baby drags and you say, people like Animation, she knows a lot of really young people, yeah. she knows people who are still in high school and stuff, mm. and they're like, the, the kids with, young kids with what they think is depression, and I say, well, if you think your life's hard now, wait till you get out of school, it doesn't get better. Um, <laughs> the bullying situation fucks off straight away, well, not in the drag community, it doesn't really. Um, just don't come here. That's just yeah. games. That's just but, um, they tell me how sort of inspiring my post was and how much it, it's helped them. It was. Like, but the thing Still is, is. It, it's even hey, HIV negative people who don't, like, but it... Yeah, but, but it, but it humanises the experience for a lot of people, oh, which is really great. Absolutely. Really, really amazing, and Crystal. Mm. Yeah, there are a few, but there's one baby queen on the scene that is also HIV positive. It's not public knowledge. It's on his gr grinder profile, though. I'm not going to mention any names, so they can tell. They can tell you like. Yeah. Um, but that was also very inspiring to me, and it's nice to be a voice for the younger generation yeah. of drag queens. Like, because we have Cam Clarkson, who's doing an amazing job. Yeah, he did like the, the plus the young, you Yeah, plus status. you and all that stuff. Yeah. But, um, I find drag a very personable job. I feel like you get to know... The community directly. I feel yeah. the same. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of community leaders who aren't actually really that connected to the community because they give speeches in halls or they do stuff and they don't actually every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night meet all the punters on Oxford Street like you guys do, you know? So yeah. that's really cool. Thank you. And it's amazing. It's it's very, and it's very, I think everyone should recognise how brave it is what Crystal did. So, yeah. so round of applause. <laughs> so lovely. So you're not dating now? Um, I'm kind of seeing someone, not mm -hmm. really, kind of, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we're going cool. on a date on Monday or Tuesday. Oh, that's exciting. Like well, I suggest just a shift restaurant? You may. Yeah. Will Wait I take that advice? Well, I didn't know. Penny will be pleased. <laughs> Can I also say, um, it's only the beginning for you, and, you, and your career is really for me. I, I always love, when you did that spot number before, your energy, you fucking exhausted coming from Trigger in North Sydney, drove over here for 45 minutes slash 20, whatever, you know, I don't know what time you left there, I'm like, what bullshit you're following, but... Um, <laughs> The energy that you give off on the stage for me is so much fun. I just love watching you and, you know, tits, 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 tits. I just think it's fantastic. So tits. I can't wait to see, um, I think some drag queens sometimes as they sort of mature, they get a little bit, maybe, is it unfair to say lazy? Or like, yeah. whereas I feel like you're always very creative, always wearing amazing things and always trying to push the boundaries for yourself. So yeah. I look forward to the next 20 years watching you. Before I go and retire, who knows? Who knows if there's going to be the next 20 years? Drags like that, you can get very tired of drag very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's Diva Awards are coming up. Oh yeah. So what's going on there? When did people start nominating for you? Um, I don't know. When it happens. Right in line behind when they start nominating for what? <laughs> I know. I know how qualified I am. I know how talented I am. Who needs I feel I'm I, That's what I say about the I'm one of the people that says, <laughs> if you're good at something, fuck modesty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're amazing, I like you. if you're an amazing artist, tell people. If you can paint, tell people you're an amazing painter. If you're a good photographer, tell people you're a good fucking photographer. I know I'm a good drag queen. I've worked my fucking ass off. Yeah. Well, not really. It's just as, sort of there behind you. <laughs> as important. As, as, as much as I would love to win an award at the Drag Industry Variety Awards, it won't define me as a person, just like this HIV doesn't, doesn't define me as a person. It's amazing. It's still the same person with or without the disease and with or without that award. I feel like what you've done with HIV is fantastic and I 100% support that you're amazing. Thank you. I feel like you've never been nominated for a diva the way you're talking about that award ceremony. But... I've been nominated once. Yes. I didn't get nominated last year. No. Oh, and, oh, I was, I was diagnosed a week before Divas. Oh, wow. A week before Divas. So I was there, Jeremy right next to me with a tissue in his hand. Well, I was on the red carpet. I was on the red carpet. And I was like, hello, hello, hello. I was interviewing you on the red carpet. Yeah, you were a real cunt to me on the carpet. <laughs> you, were, you were a real fucking prick. I apologize. And that concludes, that concludes the interview this evening. It's fine. Oh my god, I, I want to have a little round of applause for Jeremy. 
Jeremy. You sound like a really good You're a lovely guy, Jeremy. Welcome. Yeah. I love you. Good to see you.